Okay, now we're in a sitting down restaurant here. Slash lying down restaurant. It's lying down restaurant that we're getting used to now in Uzbekistan. This is the kind of thing we've seen the last few days, but uh, this is a resting day in Uzbekistan before we get going. So what we're going to do now, we'll just while we can still remember where we've been, we'll do a little bit of looking back at Iran. And I'm okay, even though I look very red in my face, it's just hot. Yeah. <laughs> Got the fun behind us, you can see, cooling us down. But uh, yeah, Iran, that was, uh, as you may know by now, a place I really wanted to go to, a place that we nearly didn't come to because it was just so much work and hassle to get the visa. We nearly gave up, I don't know how many times, but uh, in the end we carried on and carried on and in the end it succeeded. We've just been to probably, well, I would say, the most definitely the most fascinating and interesting country we've been to so far. So it hasn't disappointed us at all. So. We can only tell about Iran from a tourist point of view and not from a, a biking tourist point of view because uh, we had to have a guide and we driven around because Andrew is a British citizen. So we were driven around all of Iran with our bicycles and with the guide with us for two weeks. So the very best thing about Iran was definitely the people. Um, nearly all the people met extremely polite, extremely friendly, warm faces, smiling faces, kind people. That's all we can say. Ar Iranian people were extremely friendly towards us also extremely interested to, to meet us and speak to us and especially take photos and Meta is now the selfie queen of Iran I think. It's, uh, <laughs> they love, sorry, they love having photos taken with Europeans to show yeah. their friends that they have been photographed with a mm. European person. Yeah. And can I just add one thing? Yeah. They're very beautiful people, I must mm, say. That's true. The most beautiful people I've ever seen, I think. Yeah, the Aryan race. Very mm -hmm. good looking people, very smart, very nice clothes. All the men in the hotels, extremely smart suits and uh, yeah. the women's uh, dresses and headscarves, extremely neat and tidy. It's, uh... Okay, now I want to tell about the, the nature. Okay, the first bit of Iran was big mountains and desert and not so many green trees or not, only with the river in the start. Okay, in the cities they have very beautiful parks and there are many people that are sitting and make picnic. Okay, another good thing about Iran is the um, is the architecture. We saw quite a few Islamic mosques and uh, a few houses that were built by rich merchants, carpet merchants, and the carpet merchant's son-in-law we saw in uh, Kashan. But uh, the architecture is extremely beautiful. Um, Islamic architecture, especially the mos mosques, they're extremely nice and beautiful, decorated inside and outside with the tiles as you may have seen on some of the photographs we've taken. But, uh, extremely beautiful, symmetrical design, everything is in proportion, it's uh, wonderful. And the colours are amazing, especially when you take pictures, it really looks, uh, looks great. But, uh, nearly all of the towns you went to, there's a, a mosque and they all follow a similar pattern with the dome and minarets and a nice, wonderful entrance and the manor houses some of them were actually influenced by the king who actually went to Europe so there's some European elements as well so um, if you like architecture then Iran doesn't disappoint it's extremely beautiful place for architecture and the towns in Iran are most clean in the center and there was no not so much rubbish you feel very safe everywhere in Iran also walking around the, the cities no problem, it was nice in the parks and everywhere, it was just a nice family atmosphere, no drunken people or crazy people, just nice and calm and just nice, yeah, because you're not allowed to drink alcohol in public in Iran, um, but you can get alcohol free beer in many places, so, but that's probably also what um, helps with the, just nice atmosphere in the past because people don't sit and drink beer they just yeah. drink tea and things and have a good time with their family and their children yeah. you are actually allowed to drink alcohol in your own home it's just not in public there's a big difference in, in Iran what you can do in the public and what you can do in the privacy of your own home okay then there's Iranian currency or their money as you saw one euro note you end up with a massive wad of Iranian uh, rials enormous wad of money that's because they're 
the currency is devalued a lot. They're in a bit of a currency crisis. So uh, we were buying uh, cups of tea for, I don't know, uh, one million reals, and it was just unbelievable, the um, currency. Also changing during the week we were there. It definitely went down <laughs> just between start of the week and the end of the week. The exchange rate uh, got better for us um, because the Iranian currency was devalued, but uh, the currency is completely out of control. Just, uh, I don't know how many millions, you spend two and a half million reals just to buy a lunch. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah. No cash points and you can't get money out from the bank. No. Well, foreigners can't, so we had to bring euros and cash into the country and exchange them there. Yeah. Okay, so religion and uh, the government, they go hand in hand in uh, Iran. So since the revolution, Iran became a theocracy. It basically means it's a government controlled by religious laws. And the religious laws they come from, Islam. So uh, today they have a supreme leader, a religious leader, but they also elect a president. And every four years, people democratically vote to elect a president. Okay, and there's the religion in uh, Iran. Of course, uh, Iran is a Islamic country, and uh, within Islam, there's two types of uh, Muslims: there's Shia Muslims and the Sunni Muslims. And in Iran, they are Shia Muslims. Um, also, in Afghanistan and in Iraq, they're Shia. The rest of the world, actually, the majority of the world, they're Sunni Muslims. And they divide into the two groups. That actually happened all the way back after the first Prophet, Prophet Muhammad, he died. The uh, Shia Muslims, they believe that Muhammad had already chosen another leader, someone from his family who would uh, be his successor. But Sunni Muslims, they believe something else. They actually thought that it should be up to the people to decide who should be the next prophet, the kind of democratic vote. So uh, they actually split the two groups, Sunni and Shia split, where the Sunni tried to elect somebody uh, by democratic means and the Shia um, actually wanted somebody that Muhammad had already chosen. But uh, in the end, they even they actually chose the same person by two different ways. But uh, that's the main reason for the the difference between Sunni and Shia. Even though now, of course, hundred years years later, there's different uh, divisions. Okay, then you can't really go to Iran without uh, talking about oil because oil, of course, is very important for Iran. Um, but um, the people that we spoke to, they actually said that uh, oil wasn't really good for Iran because it means that the government, they don't focus on things like tourism and industry and uh, they just basically rely on the oil for, for their income, which means that a lot of other things in Iran, they, they uh, don't have a high priority. It's a little bit of a shame and you could uh, see it's causing a bit of frustration with the people in Iran. But uh, oil, of course, is important. Um, and always a topic of debate in Iran at the moment. But, uh, oil was actually found by the British, sorry, 100 years ago in Iran. And then uh, Iran had a very good relationship with the West during that time. When there's at that time there was a king that was uh, in power in Iran. He had good relations with the US and with England. And uh, cheap oil was flowing at that time to, to England and, and America. And then about 50 years ago, people start getting a little bit annoyed. They hear of corruption between the, the king and that... Uh, a lot of the money is not actually going to the people in Iran. So there was then a, a revolution in Iran, and the the king he was uh, expelled from the country, and that's when Iran became a theocracy, a religiously based country. But since then, uh, yeah, a little bit complicated. But basically, uh, the relationship between Iran and the U.S. broke down, and uh, the U.S. and England they stopped buying oil from Iran. But uh, not because they wasn't allowed to, but just because they had to pay the real market price. It, uh, and they wasn't allowed to buy it at cheap rates as they was before with the king. It, uh, it's a complicated story, but that's basically what we've been told once we've been here. So, uh, but oil, as we've been told, it's it's responsible for nearly all of the wars and problems and conflicts in in this area here. A little bit of a shame, really. But uh, yeah, that's the way it is, unfortunately. Okay, the warmest place was yet yet was in after Tehran and. Uh, yeah, and actually it can snow there, but only in the winter time or raining. In the summer time it can be to 43 degrees in the desert, so that is very hot. <laughs> Before the revolution, it was told that the women was covering themselves a lot, not because they had to, but because that was their religion and their tradition. 
And then after the revolution, then it became the law that women had to wear a headscarf. Now they have to wear a scarf. But people are starting to protest uh, about that. And slowly then, I think the scarf is moving further and further back and sitting more and more loose around the, the neck and everything. And they're not very strict. And I was told, especially towards tourists, they, and they expect people to wear a scarf, but they're not very strict about it at all. If it falls down, then, oh, you just put it up again and just take it relaxed, really. Um, the normal in uh, Iran is arranged marriages, but that is also starting to change slowly and it's becoming more modern and Western, where some people want to choose their own husband and wife. And you can also get a divorce, so that's also like in Europe. And you are allowed to have more than one wife, but it's not common at all. And if you have more than one wife, then you have to treat them exactly the same. So they have to have just as good houses and you have to share your time between them and everything has to be, mm. be equal. Yeah. You can also have a temporary marriage, <laughs> is that right? <laughs> so if uh, maybe um, a soldier is sent to war and at the, the front line and maybe there's a widow living there, they can actually get married like temporarily, <laughs> something like that, maybe for two months or so. Um, and then they can split up again. They have to pay for their house and uh, all their um, costs by the time that yeah. they're in this and, relationship with them. They have to and, cover all the costs and as good as the, they do with any other wife. Everything has to be equal. You can't have one wife living in luxury and the other one is just uh, living in squalor. It has to be equal between all your wives. <laughs> so it's actually frowned upon to have these temporary wives really. So, but it is allowed. According to the law, the Islamic law allows this. We suppose it's just not to have an affair or a boyfriend mm. or girlfriend has to be legalized. Also to stop prostitution there, the guy told us. Oh yeah. 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 In public, in, you're not allowed to hold hands with people that you're not married to or uh, related to. And a man and a woman that are not related shouldn't shake hands in, in public. But also our guide said, well, there were some of the drivers that shook hands with me and they said people are doing it it's like up to the individual they're taking it more and more relaxed and that it's not so strict but maybe you just don't do it in front of the police officer mm. but iran is nowhere as strict as we thought it would be they're much more relaxed than yeah, yeah. we imagined yeah. not as islamic as we thought it would be actually we noticed more islam in turkey than we did in iran and also uh, the call to prayer Hardly heard it in Iran, whether the because the hotels we were staying in were extremely good insulated, uh, but uh, really didn't hear it at all. In Turkey, we heard it all the time, no matter where we were, even on our bikes, even on top of a mountain, camping in the wilderness, you could hear evening call to prayer, but not in Iran. Okay, thank you, Iran, for a good holiday and experience. So, thank you. Mm. And thank you to our guide, Said, who was very good and gave us a lot of information. Very professional and very informative. So, thank you very much, Said, and the driver. Extremely good. I can't complain about anything at all. went perfectly well and we had a great time. So, thanks, Iran. <laughs> Super thank you, place. Iran. Maybe thank one day we'll go back. We're missing Shiraz. We didn't go to Shiraz. That's probably supposed to be one of the best places to go. But, Maybe in the future, if I get a Danish passport, I'll go back on my bike. We'll see. Who knows? <laughs> so that was Iran. Well, we still can remember Iran. So um, that was a bit of a summary of what we experienced and learned in Iran. Okay, bye bye. <laughs>